Two free selections, both in the NBA, coming your way in just a moment as I break down your games between the Pacers and Wizards. Gee, will Roy Hibbert actually show up for this game tonight? Who knows? And also, your game between the Thunder and the Clippers, maybe the Thunder can avoid losing by 142 points at home like they did in game number one as they try to square that series. Plus, in the National League, a good one, Braves and Cardinals, Wainwright and Minor in Atlanta. I've got all those free picks coming your way in just a moment. But first, guys, let's talk about some important business. As I mentioned to you earlier this week, I'm on the road. This time in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, I always stay at a Marriott property. I mean, I've been doing so for the past 10 years. It reminds me of a story. I once uh, worked with this guy in Atlanta. Somebody asked him, hey, do you go camping? He says, sure, I camp all the time as long as the building has Marriott spelled out in red on the top of it. And I understand where he's coming from. But as you know, a couple weeks ago I was in Vegas. I kept pointing out that picture that I thought about stealing, perhaps raffling off, because it certainly brought me good luck. Well, this particular part of the Marriott family, they don't have pictures on the wall. But they have something just as good. Yes, they do not have the pictures that somebody bought, I think, 33,000 of them and put them up in that particular Marriott brand as I was staying in Vegas. But instead, we've got something better. Look over my shoulders, guys. See that ugly green vase? They are in every single room. Not only the green one, but this beautiful orange vase. Now, frankly, this looks like an oversized bong for a giant. You know, I mean, it looks like something out of the Dazed and Confused movie that Richard Linkletter would have put in there. But I really think that somebody went to Pottery Bar and said, oh, my God, they're having a sale on these. Let me buy 42,000 of them, put them in every single one of those rooms. And then they said, hey, that ugly green one over my shoulder, we'll get them, too, because you've got to have a matching set of ugly bosses when you go into a room. So. We've discussed Marriott today. Now, let's move on to the important stuff. Yesterday, of course, I cashed in with a 10-dime uh, run line play, number 7 out of 9, which you got as the $5 play of the day, and it was the Detroit Tigers. And I cannot tell you how close I was to taking the Angels at home against the Yankees. And as you know, L.A. lost that game 4-3, I believe was the final score, instead of Detroit. But then I looked at Detroit, and I looked. They had a rookie pitcher going, Robbie Ray, and I thought, hmm, you know, Maybe your first choice isn't often the best choice. And I wasn't that sold on the Angels. And then I looked at Ray, and I saw that he had some impressive minor league numbers. And then I looked at how the Tigers were playing. And let's face it, guys, you know, he didn't have to be a rocket scientist. They were going against the Houston Astros. But stranger things have happened. And then I thought it was divine intervention. Someone was speaking to me from the up above. Because it dawned on me, this is 2014. 1984, the first year I really got into serious betting. It started in baseball season. And that year, the Detroit Tigers won their first nine games. I was on them seven times. That year, the Detroit Tigers won 35 of their first 50, uh, 40 games, 35 and five start. I had them in 28 of those wins and only lost two times. My bookmaker, Danny, a former, um, I think he was a high school principal. He was located in suburban Philadelphia. He hated when I called because he knew no matter what price he put on the Tigers, I was playing them straight up on the run line. I mean, it was a joke. You know, I'd give him my number, number 357. He says, yeah, Al, Tigers again? Absolutely, Dan. Now, probably the next guy that called him bet the Tigers, he gave them probably a discount of 30 points. You know what I mean? But for me, he probably jacked up the line because I was beating him like a steel drum. Best first six weeks of a baseball season I have ever enjoyed. So I thought about that yesterday, and that's why I came out with the Tigers, and they rewarded me with the 11-4 to run line win, which you got, as I said, as the $5 play of the day. And FYI, today, go for run line winner number 8 out of 10. It's on the nighttime card, and it is the triple play, 777 play of the day. You get it for $7.77 by using coupon code triple seven T R. I-P-L-E, and the number seven. Okay, let's talk about some other things here. I tell you who wins. I tell you who loses. It's only fair. Matt Rivers, he not only lost, he got crushed last night. Listen, it was a game for the first half between Brooklyn and Miami. But yesterday, Rivers came out with the first ever 750,000 star play of his career. Normally, a 500,000 star play is his best bet. Mm, I'd say he was on the wrong side with the Brooklyn Nets. He wasn't the only one. Brian Rosica went down with the 50 dime play on the Nets as well. Who would have guessed that the Heat would actually blow them out? But hey, listen, that's why they played the series, you know? I mean, so the fact that the Nets went 4-0 and in the regular season, three of those games were decided by one point. The other one went into overtime. Just goes to show you, sometimes you have to throw the uh, stats right out of the window. Today, half-price play of the day is going to be Jeff Benton with his 100-dime NBA winner, number 5 out of 7 on the Thunder and Clippers. He has won 20 of the past 27 days. 
He has $10 betters up $6,000 in that stretch. And more importantly, you've gotten 16 of his last 27 releases at huge discounted prices, including 100 dime winners on the Pacers on Saturday. Uh, in Game 7 against Atlanta, 100 dime winner on the Warriors uh, last Thursday, out right over the Clippers at home. And today's play equals those. And remember, this is the same guy that closed the season 17 and 8 with college basketball, 100 dime plays actually over the past two years in college basketball. This play just as strong, and you get it as the half price play of the day by using coupon code HALF, H A L F. Here's a little head up, heads up for you. Craig Davis, who has his second biggest play of the season, and a guy who I have told you has just been devastatingly good over the past few years with his plays involving the Oklahoma City Thunder because he lives outside of the Oklahoma City area. He really has had his finger on the pulse of these teams, avoided game number one, in fact. He has the exact same side as Benton has tonight. So there you've got a little mini consensus for you. And again, that coupon code is half, H-A-L-F. Uh, also turning once more to Brad Welton, and why the hell not, as it goes for winning day number 25 out of 39 with his Eastern semifinals total of the year on the Wizards and the Pacers. You save $75 by using coupon code. Are you ready? This is original. Save 75, S-A-V-E, and then number 75. Of course, last night you got a 60-dime winner, just as strong, the Blazers spurs over for $14. Monday you got a 60-dime winner, the Thunder Clippers over in game number one for $9. Saturday you got his Warriors Clippers winner over for just $9. And hell, you've gotten 79 of his last 89 releases rated at 60 plays at huge discounted prices, so why not get another one tonight? Again, that is coupon code SAVE75. And just like yesterday, let me give you a heads up revolving, involving Wilton's play. Wilton and Scott Delaney, who is seeking winning day number 16 out of 19 and had his 50 dime NBA winner number 11 out of 12 tonight on the same exact total result. For this particular game between the Wizards and the Pacers. So there you've got another uh, consensus as well for Delaney and Wilton. So that'll do it for your promos. Let me see. Is there anybody else I have to tell you about who's hot and who's not? I gave you Rivers. I gave you Rosica. Uh, oh, Anthony Red, 60 dime NBA playoff winner, number seven out of eight, Clippers and Thunder. Uh, had the Nets out right on Sunday as a 60 dime play. Hey guys, let me uh, you know let me do this because it just dawned on me. I didn't look up and see who the hell Anthony Red has here. Let me tell you if he is going along with Craig Davis and uh, Jeff Benton in this one. Da, da, da. I feel like now we should have a musical interlude. But instead, hey, just look at the Boz back there. Just think about the Boz while you're taking time here. Meditate about it. Ah, uh, yes. He is on the exact same side as the other guys in that game. So you got a triple consensus. You got A Red, you got Craig Davis, and Jeff Benson, with Benson, of course, the biggest play of them all. And he, of course, is the half price play. If you know one, you know them all there. Can't do you better than that. Okay, let's talk about these two games here. First, I want to talk about the Washington game uh, with Indiana. Listen, um, as I told you going into game number one, when I took the Wizards in that game, why would you expect Roy Hibbert to suddenly show up? after he's been missing in action for a number of months. And he certainly didn't show up. In fact, his box score showed zero points and zero rebounds. So it was just an illusion, that good performance he had game number seven against the uh, Hawks. I mean, it is amazing that Marcin, uh, or how do you say it? In, let's see, Marcin uh, Gortat, uh, just a smaller guy, totally outplayed him, 12 points and 15 rebounds. And Nene, uh, you know, he threw in 15 points and six rebounds. I mean, they, being the Wizards, absolutely hammered the Pacers in that game. Out-rebounded them 53 to 36. That's what happens when you're only playing five on four because the Pacers, Pacers didn't have a center on the floor. Hibbert was just this phantom occupying a uniform. You know, and Hibbert says he's going to get more involved and he's going to show up tonight. Really? You didn't show up for six of the first seven games against the Hawks, and you didn't show up for game number one here, and you didn't show up for the final six weeks of the regular season, but tonight you're going to show up? Come on. We're gamblers. We're not suckers. So I think you got to take Washington plus the four points. As I told you going into the series, I think that the greatest advantage that the Wizards have is that they've got an outstanding backcourt with Bradley Beal, who poured in 14 of his 25 points in the fourth quarter in game number one, and John Wall, who was relatively quiet, a bad shooting night, four for 14, but 13 points, nine assists. You know, you put them up against Lance Stevenson and George Hill. I'll take the Wizards duo. And then in the front court, yeah, you got Paul George and you got David West. 
But then you have Roy Hibbert. You know, I think that going into this series, as I pointed out on Monday's video report, that, you know, Gortat and Nene gave the Wizards a chance to at least be equal on the boards. What I hadn't even uh, counted on was uh, Drew Gordon coming off the bench with uh, 12 points and 13 rebounds in 18 minutes. I mean, so you get that type of production from your three key front court guys. Hey, when Trevor Ariza throws in 22 points and is deadly from three-point range, can't ask for more than that. So, you know, the Pacers only had 20 points in the paint. That is their fewest number of points in the paint for the entire season. We're talking a sample size of, what, 82, 90 games. And they had their worst performance in points in the paint in game number one. And that's what happens when you're out-rebounded and you're outscored in terms of second-chance points 19-5, to five, as the Wizards did. So I would grab the four points plus the Wizards here because they are the confident team. My God, uh, they've won seven straight on the road dating back to the regular season. They've won nine of their last ten games overall. So I'll go with them. Oklahoma City, a much tougher situation. Listen, as I pointed on my website... I like the Thunder today, okay? Do I like them more than the Wizards? Probably not, just about equal, but I am not putting any money on them because the fact is it would be like what I call double dipping. Listen, I already have a series play on the uh, Thunder minus $1.70 in this series, okay? Uh, it's foolish for me to bet on them tonight because, again, that's double dipping. I need them to win tonight. If they don't win tonight and square that series at 1-1 and cover the spread, well, hell, I'm looking to bail out of that series anyway. Now, whether I bail out in the NBA in that series or I bail out in baseball, which I started to do last night, FYI, with the Tigers on the run line plus ten. It doesn't matter because it's not like your sports book or your bookmaker is saying, oh, wait, we got to pay off the NBA losses before we pay off the baseball losses. We keep two different sheets. It's all money. It's all betting. It doesn't matter. So when people say, hey, they got to bail out, it doesn't have to be on the series. It doesn't have to be involving a particular team. It doesn't have to be on the same sport. People just misconstrue the whole concept of bailing out. But I'm looking at this game here. You know, I often talk about the law of averages. Is Chris Paul, a guy who averaged just a shade over 19 points during the regular season, going to hit eight three-pointers and go for 32 points like he did in game one? Um, whew, I hope the hell not. <laughs> you know, I mean, listen, the Clippers hit 19 of 29 three-pointers. And what's really surprising in this game, the Thunder hammered the Clippers on the board, out-rebounded them 47-31, and they lost the game by 17 points, 122 to 105. But that's also what happens when you're the Thunder and you commit 17 turnovers as Mr. T.O., and I'm not talking Owens, I'm talking Russell Westbrook, certainly didn't help the Thunder's cause. Worst home loss in the Thunder's history since moving from Seattle to Oklahoma City. Imagine that. Worst home loss ever. I got to go with the Thunder here, minus the five and a half points, because I think tonight maybe they show up and play a little defense. God, I hope so, having them in the series. Now, in baseball, I'm going to go with the Cardinals, minus $1.15 at Atlanta with Adam Wainwright. Listen, Wainwright struggled in his last start against the uh, Chicago Cubs, giving up 10 hits and six runs in five innings. But remember, he entered that game with a 25-inning scoreless streak, okay? He had won his previous four starts, giving up just four runs on 16 hits over 31 innings. Team has scored 33 runs in his last five starts. And considering the Cardinals have been inconsistent all season offensively, you got to love the way they support Wainwright who in three road starts has an earned run average of 2.06. And his success outside of Bush Stadium should not be surprising because last year, 17 road starts, he went 10 and 3 with an ERA just a shade over 3.3. Uh, nine career starts against the Braves, 7 and 2 with an earned run average of 2.98. Now, Atlanta's going with Mike Miner tonight. He made his season debut Friday against the light hitting Giants, gave up two runs in six innings. Do you know in his last seven regular season starts, Miner is 0 5 with an ERA? over four. Cardinals took the opener 4-3. They lost last night 2-1 as the Braves snapped a seven-game slide. But listen, Atlanta has only scored 16 total runs in their last nine games. 16 runs in nine games. Hell, they've only scored three runs or more, or I should say more than three runs, four times in their last 15 games. Second fewest runs in the majors. Who's, number, who's the last uh, lowest scoring team in the majors, just in case you're in jeopardy? Well, Alex, that answer would be, who are the San Diego Padres? So I'm going to go with the Wainwright and the Cardinals. The Wainwright? The Cardinals and Wainwright. It, it's, it's those. It, they've just they've shaken me. I mean, again, can you sleep at night if you had to have this in the room? I mean, I have to hide it behind the TV. So anyway, I'm going to go with the Cardinals here, and that'll do it. And uh, your free picks again to Washington Wizards, the um, 
uh, Oklahoma City Thunder and the St. Louis Cardinals. That'll do it. Best of luck to you guys. And I will talk to you again tomorrow.